What's up guys, Safir on Super Saf Speaks and welcome to episode number two of the podcast with me, your host, Super Saf. And Thunder E from Border Work, your co-host. And we've got an exciting episode today. We've got lots of things to talk about, in particular, the Samsung Galaxy S21 series, which has just been announced. So we'll be talking a lot about the latest smartphones from Samsung, but also the Galaxy Buds Pro which uh, will announce alongside the S21 series. Following on from that is a topic around, uh, well, a topic we get asked about a lot, which is how do tech reviewers and journalists get devices early, such as the S21 devices. And we'll talk about what embargoes are, what NDAs are, and how you see everybody go live with their videos and articles at exactly the same time. After that is, uh, I'd say, the most requested topic to talk about, and that is around the WhatsApp privacy policy. It has been updated Mm -hmm. and it's been a big talking point. So we'll talk a little bit about that, what that means. And we'll also look at a few alternatives to WhatsApp if uh, if that's something that you're interested in. And finally, we'll finish off by talking about Elon Musk, who is now the richest man in the world. We'll talk a little bit about Tesla, the stocks, and also Mars. So lots to talk about today. Um, Before we do kick off, I just want to say a big thanks to the response, which has been amazing from the first episode. And a special thanks to everybody who has been leaving feedback. That's very much appreciated. And leaving uh, ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts. It just helps more people see and uh, hear Mm -hmm. about the podcast. So please do drop a rating and a review if you do get some time. Right, so Thunder, S twenty ones finally official. Yes, it is. It is. I'm I'm excited actually about this device. What about you? Yeah, I mean the the thing is though, like the leaks and rumors have just there's just been so many leaks and rumors to the <laughs> point where, um, so so I I put together a leaks and rumors video uh, a, a couple of weeks before a new de- a big new device is about to come out. So I do a lot of research and I kind of put everything together. And I would say I'm pretty much 99% that video ticks off literally everything because there were so, so many leaks. <laughs> but regardless, leaks aside, uh, I'm pretty excited. I think the S series is definitely one of my favorite uh, series of uh, smartphone that we get uh, in the year. But uh, there's there's lots to talk about. So mm-hmm. three new devices. I think that was something that most of us were expecting. There's the S21 with a 6.2 inch display, the S21 Plus with a 6.7 inch display, and then we've got the flagship, the, the big boy, uh, yeah. the S21 Ultra. So f- first impressions, Thunder. Um, you know what? I, I like the lineup this year. I like mm. the pricing of the lineup this year as well. Um, mm. I think, I think, you know, it's positioned well enough where we don't get that sticker shock from last year with the S20, where we went the base S20. We were like, whoa, this one, you kind of go like, okay, yeah, I see where you're going with this. Um, also, with the Ultra, we moved to that. The It's got the second generation 108 megapixel sensor uh, mm. with you know the dual pixel and this laser focus. So there's a lot of things there that make me excited for that camera. But I think the biggest thing, and maybe we should kind of talk about this first, is the S21 Ultra has the ability to use an S Pen. Yes, this, this, is, this is very interesting because obviously the S Pen has been unique and exclusive to the Note series for many years now, um, well, since it released. And it's a feature that you know Note users swear by. Uh, Note users absolutely love. Now, Mm -hmm. it seems like Samsung has seen the demand from other users for this as well, but they don't necessarily want a Note device. It's it's maybe not for everybody. It's probably just a niche that, you know, maybe do want that S Pen. But being able to offer that to S21 Ultra users, I think is, is a really, really good thing. But what's interesting is that it's not coming with the device. It doesn't sit inside the device. You will have to buy a case that's going to be bundled with an S Pen that's going to be, you know, sold separately. And that way it is for people who actually do what really, really want the S Pen. So, yeah, I mean, I think it just uh, 
I, I love seeing variety in the market and now uh, users can, you know, if somebody's on an upgrade cycle who would have normally got last year's note at this point in time, so maybe they've got an upgrade cycle earlier this year, they might be considering going for the S21 Ultra and then getting a case with the S Pen. Yeah, I know. I definitely agree with you with that. I think it, it's, you know, at first I had mixed feelings with the rumors, right? It's like, we're getting an S Pen and I am a diehard Note user. I mean, using the Galaxy Note at least constantly from the Galaxy Note 3. So for mm. me, I, I felt like this was like a travesty to my, my you know, my, my livelihood, my being. <laughs> you know, so so it was it was it's good to see it's it's also a little bit different in terms of just design and look. It's it's bigger. The way it works with the case is also different. Um, and I also like the fact that you can still use other S pens as well on there. Uh, the device, you know, Samsung is doing something really interesting, and I think most people won't understand this till later on in the year when other devices come out. Um, and especially how it positions with the Galaxy Note and say the you know the Z Fold, the Galaxy uh, Fold Three. Sorry, see I was getting confused with the <laughs> structure again. <laughs> yeah, N naming is very bad for for the Fold. I think we yeah. can all agree on that. But yeah, it's it's going to be interesting with with those kind of things. And also, I mean, look at the battery sizes on all three devices. We got four thousand mm. for the S twenty one. Then the S twenty one Plus is, f I believe, it's forty eight hundred. Four thousand eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then and then the uh, ultra is is five thousand milliamps. So yeah. battery life and you know with use with five G, I don't think will be a problem with the S twenty one series this year. I think we're going to see some really good battery life. Now, what do you think about the display, especially now that we've got a clear separation with the ultra and the. 21 and 21 plus so so before we get into the display i just want to mention a couple of things uh, about the battery so yeah the first thing because the s pen is not embedded it doesn't mean that you can get a massive 5000 milliamp hour battery on the s21 ultra which you otherwise would not have been able to do to be able to include that space in the s pen so that might be an advantage that the s21 ultra you know potentially has on the note that comes later on the other thing that I want to also um, touch on is the fact that because we do have the new chipsets, the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8088, as well as the Exynos uh, 2100, um, that's going to be, again, interesting how that affects battery life. Obviously, we're going to have to test these thoroughly and uh, kind of see what the performance is like. But I'm very, very positive that we're going to be getting great battery life from the new S21 series. We'll see if there's a bit of a difference between the Exynos and the Qualcomm, because that's something that, you know, traditionally the Qualcomm has always been quite a bit ahead in terms of performance as well as battery life. Mm -hmm. The Exynos is supposed to be improved, but, you know, we're going to have to see. I'm going to get hold of both devices and, you know, do some thorough testing. Uh, one of the things before we move on to this, uh, the display again is, does the S21 Ultra having an S Pen mean the end of the Note series? That's something that's been going about quite a bit. And as soon as we started hearing these rumors, people were straight up there saying, oh, is the Note gonna die? What do you think, E? I've told you this many times. I think it's it's bye-bye for the Note. Um, but I don't think it's going to be a classic, you know, cut and run mm. type of thing. I think we're gonna have a Note 21 this year. I think that's actually very succinct. But I think it's not the inclusion of the S Pen in the Galaxy S21 series, or the S21 Ultra that signifies the end. It's the rumors that we're hearing of the Z Fold 3 that having, S, having that S Pen included. I think mm. that's where we're going to see the true shift. Uh, I think the, having the S Pen here gives that flexibility that you know, Samsung, I probably always, always wanted to introduce this for a while with the mm. S series, but now that they can do it, especially with more stylish cases and ways to ensure that your S Pen doesn't get lost, right? Mm. Uh, especially since it's not docked into your device. I think 2022, we will not have a note. 21 is the last year, AKA, well, if you're from America or you live in America, you know, now you can drink, so which means the Note 21 is a big boy and can <laughs> move on and live a glorious life on its own. <laughs> well, see, that's that's interesting. I, I, uh, I agree with you to a certain extent, but the one thing I want to say is like, I personally, well, the fact that the S21 Ultra 
doesn't come with the S Pen included tells me that it's not the end of the Note series as yet, right? So I agree with you that there is going to be uh, pretty much certainly a Note um, 21, right? Mm -hmm. I still think there's going to be a Note 22 because um, I, I agree with you that the Fold 3 uh, potentially having the S Pen support will mean uh, that Samsung is potentially trying to evolve the Note series into um, the Fold, right? The and fold, bringing yeah. that over, right? Which is which is all well and good, but I still feel that um, the Note still has a place and especially a very strong fan base. So I think it will be at least another year, especially considering the pricing of foldables right now. I think they're still too high. And to be able to bring that down, um, because yeah, Note users like bigger displays. That's what they've always liked. And having that on the, um, uh, uh, you, know, you know, having an S Pen on a foldable kind of is that natural evolution, shall we say. But I still think we're going to be um, at least another year off. Wouldn't you, okay, I want to ask you this idea because I, I, I thought this was something Samsung was going to do with the Z Fold. And I think mm. they still might. Wouldn't it be better for Samsung to have, uh, say, in 2022, not 2021, 2022, we have the Galaxy Note 20, or sorry, Note 22. And the Note mm. 22 is a slab-like phone, like we know, with an S Pen. Mm. And then the Note 22 Ultra, or Super Ultra, whatever we would call it, is yeah. basically the Z Fold 4. That's mm. just what it is. Because that's, to me, that's the true extension of a Note. That's you taking it to the ultimate level of what the Note can be. That, I think, would be an interesting way to continue the Note line because then, you know, the, yeah, even with affordable, there's some people who still want a traditional looking phone as a mm. Note user. Like, you know what? Nah, that's really not for me. So you can keep that there and then you can go, well, if you really want to take the Note to the next level, yeah, it has a foldable. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to wait and see. Um, but let's let's bring the conversation back to the S twenty one series. So <laughs> you mentioned the displays. So yeah. okay, so the S twenty one Ultra, we finally have Quad HD with one hundred and twenty hertz together, and I think that yeah. might be partly because the, they can meet the battery demand with that 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but also with the new chipset, which gives you that you know efficiency. So that's why they've been able to do that. The display can also uh, go between um, as around 10 hertz to 120 hertz. So it's uh, yeah. adaptive in that sense. So then that way you're going to be able to go right down when, need, when needed. Again, that goes towards battery life. So I think that's another reason why Samsung's bringing that. But the S21 and the S21 Plus, for the first time, do not get a quad HD display. It's full HD. Mm -hmm. full, now, full HD plus. Full HD plus. I mean, yeah, you could cast up, but generally full HD. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna step in and say personally, that's not a big deal for me, right? Because I've been using the Note 20 Ultra before that. I was using the S20 Ultra. I've used the um, S20 FE Only Fans Edition, <laughs> and they've all had full HD displays, or they've had quad HD displays, but you can only use 120 Hertz if you have full HD enabled, which means yeah. I've had full HD enabled on all of those devices for, I'd say around the past year that I've been using them. Has it been a big deal for me? Absolutely not. So no. for me, I don't think it's a big deal. However, based on feedback, seeing people react, some people are kind of like, no, but this is the S20, you know, this is the S series. It should have the Quad HD. Quad HD. What, do you, what, what, what do you think? What do you think, E? Uh, if you asked me this question three years ago, I would have said, no way. We need to stick to Quad HD. Like, you know, this is, this is blasphemy. Uh, but mm. you know what? Uh, you're right. Like everything you said, um, I use it with the 120 hertz and I don't notice the difference. The way Samsung displays are made also is you can drop that to the lowest resolution and you probably still will not know the difference. Mm. <laughs> Unless maybe you're watching content at the lowest resolution itself. But mm. I, I think most people don't realize. Uh, a great example is the uh, S20 FE last year. Uh, did mm. really well, well welcomed. It wasn't a Quad HD display as well on that device. And I think Samsung looked at that carefully and said, Ultra, yeah, makes sense. It's top of the line. Uh, yeah. But we need to go full HD plus with the 21 and the 21 plus. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, interesting. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, then do let us know in the comments below what uh, does does it matter that the S twenty one and the S twenty one plus do not have a quad HD display? Does it not matter? Definitely let us know. Now, another thing that we now don't have on any of the S twenty ones. Firstly, let's talk about the micro SD card, right? So the micro SD card has been something that's really been um, uh, something of pride for Samsung uh, users, having that uh, option to be able to expand the memory on your device. This is now yeah. gone. Goodbye. What, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so personally, and we've had this conversation. I mean, personally, for me, it's fine because I haven't used a, a micro SD card on any of my devices in the mm. last three years. I can't find my last micro SD card that I use. So for me, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not that important anymore. Uh, I'm also mm. one of those people. I don't actually use cloud backups, which is an option for a lot of people. Mm. Every time I stop using the phone, I actually just dump it onto my computer and I have a server. And I, I, that's just my own routine. Uh, but there are many ways. Plus, storage sizes are much larger. And here's the most important thing that a lot of people will forget is the storage speed on your Galaxy device at UFS mm. 3.1 .3 is, uh, I want to say 100 so times much. It's, it, it's so much faster than the Night and day. SD card that you're using. So while yeah. trying to access information, uh, you know, it will look like your phone is slowing down for no reason. It's because storage is slower on the micro SD card compared yeah. to the internal storage. So which is why I don't think it's a big deal. But as you, you just asked me that question, I thought about the last video I did, which is my, I switched to the iPhone video. Um, <laughs> I had actually had a few comments people where people were like, you know what, I'm gonna stick to Android. Some some one guy actually specifically said I stick to my Galaxy because I have an SD card slot. I was like, uh So so it seems like okay for us, we're gonna we're gonna tell you again for me as well. I don't think I've not used an, an SD card in a smartphone for some time, right? Uh, one of the reasons being is that again the main reason being that that uh, slow transfer speed. Uh, you know if you go through your photo gallery on your, your your device what's stored locally it's so much smoother and so much quicker as soon as you go into micro sd there's going to be that that little bit of lag which i which i don't like right now i think for me and you that's fine we don't mind um not having the micro sd card support but there are lots of people and i'll give you another use case so i know a lot of people who like to quickly just pop out the sd card and just drop it in right and I'm talking, you know, creatives who maybe do some sort of filmmaking. They may, maybe they're shooting in 8K. Transferring those files is still going to take a long time, whether that's over USB Type C cable or whether that's, you know, through some sort of uh, cloud backup. It's going to be slow, right? And this is the thing. So having that a micro SD card does just give you that convenience of I'm just going to pop this out plug it in and then I've got it instantly, almost instantly on uh, my um, laptop, which I can then edit, right? So that's one of the things. But here's, here's, my, here's my sort of take on it. Samsung, I don't mind that you've not included the micro SD card, but I do feel that you should have started at 256 GB, right? Now I know it's not too much, expen too much more expensive to go for the 256 GB option on e any of the devices, but one thing that I loved about the Note 10 Plus, and E, I know you, uh, Zach as well, was still on the Note 10 Plus when you know we spoke a few months ago. We actually mm -hmm. switched back to the Note 10 Plus from my S20 Ultra just because the Note 10 Plus was such a good device. That came with a base of 256 gigabytes. And I think that made it very, very unique. And it made it, you know, like if, if somebody buys a new smartphone, an S21, okay, they're, they're, they're a little bit disappointed that there's no micro SD card but you've got 256 gigs as a base. I think that yeah. would have been a very good way because I mean, it's not gonna cost that much for storage, but I think that would have been a very good way for Samsung to transition the lack of a micro SD card slot for a device that's had it for many, many generations. Yes. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I do agree with you. Uh, 256 is a smart way to do it. Um, some people might, some people will say, oh, well, that can be expensive. I'm just saying in general. But remember this, Samsung makes memory themselves. So <laughs> it's definitely some... cheaper for them to actually yeah. put it up there. 
in so yeah. but I, I do agree with you on that aspect uh, I think we should move on to the other thing that's also missing that's <laughs> yep the other big thing that's missing yeah. so as you guys have now or will learnt the S21 series no longer comes with a charger should we, should we take a moment of silence for the loss of the charger out of the box of the S21 series <laughs> um <laughs> Here's the thing, right? So the S21, like, okay, f f I'm going to tell you my personal take on this, right? So Apple removing the charger, it wasn't that much of a big deal for me personally because I'm I'm somebody who uses wireless charging and I haven't taken, generally taken a charger out of the box of a new device for quite some time unless there's something specific for the charger. For instance, some of the new Oppo devices have 65 watt VOOC charging, etc. So if I want to test that out, yes, I'll take it out. But generally speaking, my usage pattern is my device is going to last me all day. If it's a good device, I'm going to drop it on a wireless charger before I go to sleep. I'm going to wake up with it 100% fully charged, right? So for me, not including the charger is not that much of a big deal. Um, what about you, E? What are your thoughts? Okay. I mean, personally, again, it's not a big deal, but I I actually want to mention some of the things that Samsung talked about uh, when referencing the removal of the lack charger. of charger. Oh, the lack the, of lack the, of charger. The, the, the excuses <laughs> that Samsung um, gave for I will. I will say it is a better excuse pattern than Apple. Uh, okay. The really the only reason I consider this is I look at it this way: Apple said no charger in the box because mm -hmm. of environmental reasons, and Apple introduced a brand new accessory for wireless charging that doesn't have any charger in the box as well. That, of course, is a failure completely. Yep. So, I mean, I, I covered said, this in my uh, review, just uh, FYI, so I covered this quite in depth in my review that, fair enough, okay, you don't include the charger, you claim that it's to help with the environment, but then the new accessory is the MagSafe charger. If you want to take advantage of the MagSafe charger, you need to buy a USB a new one. type C charging brick, which most users will not have. Do if you want to take advantage of the faster charging that the new iPhones offer, once again, you will the five watt charger is not going to give you that fast charging capability. So once again, you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to buy. Mm -hmm. So the claimed environmental, uh, you know, benefits that Apple had, in my opinion, are completely false because if if you count all the people who go out and are going to have to buy those chargers if they want to use MagSafe then what about the environmental impact from all of those, right? So yeah, yeah so, 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 so that's kind of just to give you guys a bit more context on, on what he's talking about here. Yeah, so with, with Samsung, Samsung says, again, environmental issues, of course, is always a key thing. Um, but they also have stated that, well, our, our devices have used 25 watt charging for the last three years. So if you're upgrading from any of those devices, you can use the charger to take advantage of fast uh wire, fast wired charging mm -hmm. now the other aspect they talked about is also talking with oems and having the chargers being sold at a cheaper price like at like the 20 dollar price point and i think the best convincing thing to me is that with samsung whenever you you do a pre-order uh you always get those pre-order credits and they are, they talked about having a power bundle that would include a charger if you want to get a charger as well, which means okay. you know, you will still get a charger as long as you hmm. pre-order the device. If you okay, want. so it, it encourages people to to do a pre-order then. Yeah, it, it, but also it means that you know you will get a charger if you want one, so if you, you can still one. get an S twenty one with a charger. Okay, so you can you can you, so they they're kind of doing that transition, but here's my issue with this whole lack of charger thing, right? You must remember that um, in Samsung marketing material, they took a dig at Apple uh, for not yeah. including a channel. So they were like, yeah. this comes with the box, right? And I, I, this, this, this is something that really annoys me, right? Because a similar thing happened when the, uh, when, when Apple were the first to get rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many manufacturers came, you know, Google, Samsung, many others. Uh, only, uh, only LG one, has stayed OnePlus. strong, though. Yeah, only LG. Only LG, but like you know, you you had um you you had uh, OnePlus as well, all guilty, all had a had a dig at Apple, and then 
you know, uh, a year or a couple of years later, boom, 3.5 millimeter God. headphone jack is, is disappeared, right? Now, as soon as um, the news came of Apple not including the charger in the box, I, I went out and I tweeted and I said, I wonder, I wonder how many manufacturers that are currently having a dig at Apple are going to do exactly the same things, you know? And I said, I believe I said in, in a year or two or a couple of years, I can't remember, because I didn't expect it to happen this fast. Like literally, it's just been a few months <laughs> and Samsung after doing that. Now, here's my thing. It's just like, not only do you come across firstly, obviously hypocritical, right? But yeah. you also position yourself as a follower, a, a blatant follower in the market, right? Which I think is such a bad look for a brand because sure, if you're gonna not include it either, that's fine, you know, okay? People are gonna say, oh, you're, you're following Apple, that's fine. But if you've made fun of Apple, then you go ahead and do the exact same thing. That is, I mean, as a brand, I think that's a, that, 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 that is a very, very bad look. And, you know, my advice to Samsung, um, to any other uh, brand, Xiaomi, is, you know, have a chat with your marketing department and just say, look, if you're gonna make fun of this device, if you're gonna be doing that, especially within a few months, maybe don't do it because it's it's so embarrassing and it's such a bad look. And I, and I think a lot of people, they see that obviously people see this and they will just be like, you just become the laughing stock, right? So that's my my problem about Samsung not including the charger. I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm cool with it personally, but what I'm not cool with is that strategy of, you know, trying to take cheap shots at another brand and then doing the exact same thing three months later yourself. Oh, no, I, abs I absolutely agree. I think I think the problem there is these companies do not have a direct, there's no direct connection between marketing or, or sorry, or PR and, you know, uh, the execs. You know, the people mm -hmm. who are making the decisions to say, let's cut this out. Xiaomi kind of saved themselves a little bit better when they said they're going to offer two options with the charger box and without the charger. I was like, that's a little close, but at least you, you straddle the line there. You yeah, know, um, I mean, it's 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 still. Yeah. I'll still say, okay, fair enough. You you're giving the option, which is great, but at the same time, you know, you did don't make fun. You know, of them. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make fun of them if you're gonna do the same thing. So there does need to be uh, more clear communication within departments, right? Because I think that's a that does come across as a as as as, as a very bad move. I mean, so don't, that's, that's don't what I'd say about the charger. Don't you think it's one of those things where? Uh, the initial reaction, and they might have been that even reaction of like, oh my God, why would they do this? And then the guys in accounting did the math and said, if we sold these many chargers, <laughs> this is what we're going to well, get. Well, well, again, I think it comes down to, uh, it comes down to the point of, you are not only a follower in the market, which is fine, but you are, you know, blatantly positioning yourself to consumers as a follower, right? Which is not a good look. Well, one of the other things I want to, I do want to mention in Samsung's defense is the pricing of each of the S21 devices is lower compared to last year. And this is the same thing that I mentioned about the iPhones. Like if you look at the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, they're actually cheaper um, uh, for the base model here in the UK, but for the high models in the US and the UK, they're actually cheaper. So, you know, you are kind of making some of that back. And even if you do go out and spend 20 bucks on a uh, a separate charger, it's just, uh, you know, it, it does make up for it. So it's just like, hey, I saved a bit of money on my device compared to what I would have paid last year. I'm gonna go out and buy this charger. It's fine. It kind of, it kind of breaks, it, it, it evens off. I'm just not cool with this, um, you know, these uh, digs that they have. Um, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. Um, We'll, we'll move on from, from that. Um, you know, S21 cameras look very promising. Um, the S21 and the S21 Plus, they, they've gone with the standard triple camera setup, the ultra wide, um, the primary, and the telephoto, uh, giving you three times optical zoom. The um, S21 Ultra is where the cameras are. Like one of the things that I keep joking about is, you know, people uh, <laughs> ask, ask Samsung, how many cameras does the S21 Ultra have? And then Samsung reply, yes. <laughs> 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 because we've got uh, the front-facing camera, but then we've got yeah. four rear-facing cameras as well as um, the infrared sensor. Sorry, mm -hmm. the laser autofocus um, yeah. uh, um, sensor. So 
We've got the primary, which is uh, the second generation of the 108 megapixel camera, which looks very promising. You've got the ultra wide, the improved ultra wide. Very interested to check that out. But then you've got two telephoto cameras. Now this, I'm, I'm gonna give Huawei credit here because Huawei did introduce this first with the P40 Pro Plus where they had two uh, telephoto cameras, 3X as well as 10X. So this is something that the S21 Ultra also has. I, I like that because, uh, you know, the, the, the one problem that I have with my um, Note 20 Ultra is five times zoom is great. Anything above five times zoom is great. Anything between one and five is not good, right? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. some of you may be wondering, what's the point of zooming just that little bit? Now, that zoom is so good for portraits because when you're taking a portrait shot, uh, you know, with a the, with the blurry background, Two times is roughly the equivalent of uh, around 50 millimeters. Um, you know, three times is roughly the equivalent of uh, around, um, you know, 70, 75, uh, sorry, 60, 65 millimeters, somewhere around there. That's normally where you, in, in my opinion, you get the best portrait shots, which are kind of more in line with what you'd get on a pro camera. So I'm glad that Samsung, you know, now have these options. So you have the 3X as well as the 10X. So when you do want that extreme zoom, great, you've got that, but you're not kind of missing out on the mid middle ground. Oh yeah, uh, I do agree with you there. I think also, I mean, I really like the P40 Plus uh, portrait for, uh, images. I think they were mm. they were really nice. So I think this is, this is gonna improve things for the Galaxy, you know, uh, S21 Ultra. And, uh, you know, I, I'll just put this, I can't wait to see your camera comparison because that's going to be, there's a lot of cameras for you to go through though. I mean, it's not three Man, anymore. <laughs> it's, I remember when I started doing camera comparisons, you know, uh, you know, my, my camera comparison videos used to be about six to seven minutes long. Now, I can't remember the last time I did a full camera comparison that was less than 20 minutes long because there's just so much to cover. But nevertheless, I'm, I am excited to see how the cameras stack up compared to um, you know, the likes of the iPhone 12 Pro Max and, and, and others. So looking forward to it, looking forward to it. Right, I think we've mm -hmm. talked plenty about the S21 series. Um, Absolutely. Both myself and uh, E will have videos on our channels. So if you are interested to see, you know, the initial hands-on coverage, as well as more coverage, unboxings, camera comparisons, uh, gaming tests, which E is the, the, the master at. Really excited to see how the 888 will perform uh, for gaming, uh, especially with the higher frame rates and the optimizations. So yeah, do look out on our channels for coverage of the S21s. We are now gonna move on to talking about another uh, key product that Samsung has announced, and that is the Galaxy Buds Pro. Now I'm, I'm gonna, put my hands up straight away and I'm gonna tell you that I'm not an audiophile. So, you know, this is E's area of expertise. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, collection of headphones that he has on the wall in the background. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a few of the key specifications of the uh, Galaxy Buds Pro and then I'm gonna pass it over to E for his first impressions uh, based on what we've seen. So we've got intelligent active noise cancellation, which uh, supposedly blocks 99% of outside noise. You can also adjust the levels of the active noise cancellation. There's four levels of ambient sound. There's auto switching. So if it does sense you talking, um, then it's automatically going to switch to um, uh, the and be in some way you can actually hear everybody. So that's 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 yeah. really cool. Really looking forward to testing that, that out. Um, auto switch, so seamless switching between Galaxy devices. Um, 18 hours of battery life, um, including the case, and one hour of charge will give you five minutes. Uh, sorry, what, five minutes of charge will give you one hour of battery life. And there's also IPX7. Uh, water and dust resistance uh, rating, which is the highest that they've ever had on any Galaxy Buds. And then there's a three mic system with wind shield technology to really help you for those calls, which we are taking a lot more of, um, especially if you're maybe out walking out and about. So those are the sort of, sort of the key features. And E, so I'm, I'm gonna pass it over to you for your for your first impressions being the audio guy. A uh, quick one on the battery life. It's 18 hours with active noise cancellation on. 28 with it off so 28 with it off wow yes. okay that's so uh, that's it's, impressive it's, it's much longer uh with that um 
so in terms of the design and look, like the case looks very similar to the Buds Life. It's actually almost mm -hmm. the same case, I would call it that. Uh, Design-wise and fit, it looks like it's it's comfortable, fits easy well. The feature I do like is the voice detect. That's something Sony has on their XM4s. Uh, they call it speech to talk, I believe, on there. Uh, the mm -hmm. way Sony's implementation is once you start talking, your music stops. So you don't have mm -hmm. to take off your headphones and you know you can mm -hmm. have a conversation with someone. Uh, Samsung's is a bit different. When you talk, it goes into ambient mode and then it mm. drops the audio down to really low. So you can still hear your music. Now it's like background music, like you're in a lounge or something, you know. So it's a bit uh, it's a bit more more cheery, right? And mm. uh, once you stop then your music goes back. So those detection things are actually pretty cool. The ANC, uh, it's nice to see that in there. Not what we have with the live where live honestly was more about I, I really think what it was is they built something that cut off frequencies when because they're open ear headphones. Yeah. yeah. So they block out certain frequencies so you can hear things, your music well, but not, mm. you know, not canceling out background noise. Um, Completely. Yeah. I, I, I think I think this is a solid offering. I think um, you know, I can't I can't give you guys my full thoughts on it yet, because you know, there's an embargo, which we'll talk about those things which, very soon. Which will <laughs> nicely, smoothly transition us to the next topic yeah. shortly. But yeah, I mean, Certainly, I'm, I'm yeah. excited. I've, I've, I've been a big fan of the Galaxy Buds uh, series. So, you know, I have been using the uh, Galaxy Buds Plus and the Galaxy uh, Buds Live. Really, really good uh, earphones. They actually stay in my ears compared to many others which don't. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something. They're also unique. I think with the you know, especially when it came to the Galaxy Buds Live, um, you know, it's not something we've really seen before. So I, I like you know, right now, obviously, when it comes to wireless uh, earphones, Apple is the leader. Um, but there's so many clones. There's so many things that look exactly like AirPods or AirPods Pro. Doesn't doesn't mean that Apple is the best. Though. I'll tell you, it's just not. Hey, the best. <laughs> that's that, that that that's that's a conversation for another time. Uh, but yeah, yeah. so very excited uh, for the Galaxy Buds. Um, uh, Pro again. We will be doing some coverage on our channels. Uh, in particular, I think he's going to be doing. Um, you're going to be doing comparison, aren't you, with some of the, um, some of the major players? So that's going to be yeah, yeah, up. yeah. So. Yeah, it should so be interesting to see that. how the how it how it matches up with the uh, the other ones. But again, I can't uh, tell you my thoughts yet because of things called embargoes. Embargoes, NDAs. How do reviewers get devices early? How do journalists get devices early? So this is something that gets asked all the time. Whenever a new device is launched, um, you'll see people taking screenshots of their subscription feeds where all of their favorite uh, tech reviewers have posted uh, their first impressions and hands-on with the device and people will be like, what's this? Do you have some sort of a secret club? I guess you could call it a secret club because it is very, very secret. So now I'm gonna kind of break down or try to break down um, how this works. So essentially, whenever uh, a brand is going to release a new product they obviously want as much hype for this product and as much coverage as they can get organic coverage for this product as possible so what they'll do is they will invite a select few trusted uh, reviewers whether they be on youtube whether they're journalists to have an early look at devices however before they have this uh, early look, they need to agree to an embargo and they need to sign an NDA. An NDA is a non-disclosure agreement, which essentially says that if you do leak any information and it goes comes back to you, then you can get sued and you can get sued big, right? I've seen some big figures on some <laughs> NDAs before where you're like, yeah, I'm not sure I really want to sign this because on the off chance, if something was to happen, you'd, you'd be in a lot of trouble, right? And yeah. then the embargo is the time when you agree to, so maybe it will be, you know, uh, 3 p.m. GMT. After that, you can post um, what you, you know, your first impressions of this device. Sometimes there's multiple embargoes. So there might be the initial hands-on embargo. Then there might be the full review embargo. Maybe uh, the brand is going to be pushing some software updates, uh, you know, after the first hands on. So they're like, hey, you need to hold back your review until these all come through. So the um, uh, that the, the full review embargo will be maybe at another time. So that's generally how it works. And this is, you know, something that we experience on a very regular basis. 
And in terms of how we actually get these, uh, it's a case of, again, if you are a trusted uh, reviewer and you know people, uh, brands see you as valuable uh, for coverage uh, of their devices, um, organic coverage of their devices, uh, they're pretty confident in their product generally, so they, they know that any coverage you do will be beneficial to them, even if there is some constructive criticism and you know potentially some, some uh, negative feedback there as well, it's still gonna be overall benefit uh, for them. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question, E. Mm -hmm. Do, have you ever heard of a time where somebody's um, broken embargo uh, or, you know, obviously we're not gonna be doing any name dropping here, but um, one of the things that we do have in, in, in NDAs generally is that if something is already out there in the public domain, that's not being leaked by you. So like, you know, for instance, um, I've covered leaks and rumors of the um, S21 Ultra uh, yeah. before it was released. Now I didn't actually have, a, you know, I, I didn't have my briefing, et cetera, before that. But generally speaking, you know, that would be something that, you know, might be considered problematic. But if there's anything that's out in, in the public domain, you are okay to cover that right? It's only if it's something that you yourself go ahead and leak, then that's when it becomes problematic. Do you know of situations where people have, you know, uh, intentionally or unintentionally broken in bugs? <laughs> He's putting his hand up there. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> Tell us more. So, so I, I, I have un unintentionally broken an embargo and this was with, uh, I won't mention the brand, but um, I had covered the product um, a day before I was spending three days with the brand, I went to their head office, and it was just a hands-on, but there was this set embargo for it in time. Um, mm. What was really funny about me breaking this embargo is because I covered the product, made my video, I set it, and um, so, because I flew to the West Coast, my laptop time was different from, you know, YouTube oh. time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So my timing went off, and then I was having dinner with the execs and you know we're sitting down we're having dinner you're asking me different questions uh and the funny thing is the funny thing is the exec <laughs> looked at it and he goes oh yeah oh man that video looked great man like it, it's live i was like oh i didn't even know it was live yet and he's like yeah it's fantastic oh, you did a really good job i like the video it's pretty cool he's like i'll have to watch it later and i'm thinking no it's all good i had no idea next minute i'm getting phone calls from the pr team they're panicking. They are just, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> they're going, dude, dude, you need to take it off. I was like, oh, uh, uh, but I just showed the exec. No, you got to take it off now. I was like, I'm sorry. Uh, and then the exec was asking me what happened. I was like, I just put the video live before it was supposed to go live. He's like, it's okay. I mean, I was lucky I was around them there where okay. uh, right. that, that kind of passed through. But the thing about it is uh, what I've noticed with brands is if you, you know, they can tell that you did this things unconsciously or it wasn't planned and they mm. are forgiven i know i do have friends in the industry who posted videos live and i've gone like dude you need to take that down and you know brands have seen that too and yes there's an initial anger at that point just because mm. it's not supposed to happen but usually the brands are like we we know it's not you we know you didn't do that on purpose because that's not your thing um yeah. but but you know there are some ramifications in in those cases in my case there was none um, in the other cases, it was more of the brands were just a bit hesitant for a little bit. It's almost like, you just gotta show us that you won't be doing this again. Okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. No, thing. so the thing is, um, so thankfully I have never uh, broken embargo. I'm, I'm, I get really paranoid and you know, I, I go to a point where I don't even like schedule videos a lot of the times. I'll actually put it live after I've seen everybody else has put theirs live just to be safe mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm, I, I get very stressed for, for things like this, especially when it comes to um, embargoes. So thankfully I've not done that, but you know, mistakes can happen, especially when you're working with 12 different time zones. <laughs> Cause you know, when you have an international <laughs> launch, especially they're like, okay, there's one going on, like, okay, they'll give you this time. And then, you know, when you've got daylight savings, which is the stupidest thing ever, by the way, um, stick to one I consistent agree. timeline, either plus one or not, yeah. you know, whatever, just stick to one and just keep it throughout the year. Cause that makes things even more confusing. So then now I've kind of worked out a method of like, okay, I'll triple check and I'll, I'll usually ask the brand as well. Can you give me the time in G, you know, in UK time, just give me it in plain English in writing. So I know what it is. Um, there there are so many times I was going to say there's so many times that uh, like, I have asked, I, I will call Saf and ask, I'm like, yo, what time is this again, man? And then yeah. I'll send a message to David. I, I send like to three people. Yeah, we just like so. kind of, just okay, make sure, you... triple, 
quadruple check just in case. Um, but I was gonna say, yeah, so I mean, I have heard of people doing this by mistake. Generally, it's, you know, if it's nothing too major, um, then it's, you know, it's a slap on the wrist just to make sure you don't do something like that again. I have heard of um, others being blacklisted. So, you know, that brand will be pretty serious about that. They are no longer uh, gonna get early access anymore. Um, so I've heard of that happening. And I once heard, again, I don't know if this was rumors, but I, but I once heard of a, uh, a particular um, uh, a creator who, who got fined as well. And as far as I can remember, again, this is not based on any um, specific information, but this is something that I heard somebody talking about, uh, which was that, that uh, creator was fined uh, in the region of around $20,000. Um, does that Ooh. sound does that sound uh, uh, right to you, E? Or Ooh, nah, that's that's a bit too much. I mean, to me, uh, most of the most of the major NDAs that we we get are from bigger brands, and they can afford to stomach even the early release or or early announcement. Remember, most of the things about NDAs is not about controlling reviews. I, I want to just clarify that with people here. It's, yes. There's no control of reviews. It's it's controlling the hype of the product launch. That's what you want to do, which is why you see staggered re reviews or staggered NDAs sometimes of different products where, hmm. um, okay, uh, I can give you an example. I don't know what the process is there with, with Apple, but you, you tend to see different creators re release videos at different times because everyone's given maybe devices at different times, for instance, yeah. right? So that's yeah. something you, you always want, to, want to, to look at is that it just helps create hype. You know, if you think about oh, it yeah. from your own personal perspective, if you own the company, you created this awesome product, the one thing you don't want to do is just flood the whole market with tons of reviews and then it kind of dies off or it just feels watered. Well, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's, like, you, it's like buying the PlayStation 5, right? Yeah. slowly you can't find it you can't find yeah. it you can't find it you no no but I, I, it's, 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 it's also they don't want the news to become live before they have their announcement they spent a lot of time money effort uh, arranging their keynotes and they don't want you know usually I think um, embargoes will be an hour after uh, a, a keynote yeah. so it's just like mm -hmm. hey you know we want we've spent all of this time we want to present our devices ourselves first which is totally understandable before everybody else goes out and does it and you know and the, and the other uh, other side to that as well is is it puts other reviewers at a disadvantage because i've seen um previously like somebody once went an hour early with a a, a device um and broke embargo again because of miscommunication but it was actually a big disadvantage to everybody else who was posting an unboxing of that device because we were an hour late which meant that the algorithm obviously favors the first video and pushes that video and that video was on you know hundreds of thousands of views and then our videos all got hit because how many unboxings are you going to see so if everybody's already seen that one unboxing then it does have an, uh, a knock on impact so breaking in what i'm trying to say is breaking embargoes is not good it could potentially result in uh, you know you being blacklisted so you would not um, be invited again to early briefings it could result in something even worse as a fine. I mean, the, the, you know, if you've signed that document, then you could well be uh, liable for damages, um, especially if you go quite early and, you know, kind of ruin that surprise element. So uh, don't break embargoes. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic, which has been a big topic of discussion online recently, and that's all about our favorite app, WhatsApp, and the updated privacy policy so yes. a lot of you guys if you use whatsapp you may have seen a, a message pop up which essentially says we've updated our privacy policy and if you don't wish to accept it then you will no longer be able to use the app from i believe it's february the 8th going forward right now a lot of people have kind of dug in to the privacy policy and it seems as though WhatsApp, because it is owned by Facebook, information will now be shared from WhatsApp to Facebook and vice versa. So, as far as I can tell, it's not gonna affect the EU and the UK. Um, as, as far as I've read online, it's not really gonna have an impact on you if you live in the UK or, the, uh, or Europe, but in other places, it's gonna have an impact on you. What impact is that gonna be? And should you 
potentially move to a different messaging platform. E, what yeah, are your thoughts? Yeah, so right, right now in the US, it's still interesting uh, because people are digging into the 8,000 word agreement that WhatsApp has created. So it's a bit of a sticker shock. Um, I received it on my device and I just said hey, no. Or I said later. I will look at it mm. later. So it's still pending for me. So we have mm. till February, I believe February 8th to either say yes to sign in and jump in. Now, I, I still can't give you a definitive answer on what it actually covers. I do know it gives access to more things uh, like the device ID, uh, the user ID, which I think mm. should be fine just because it's a user ID, uh, advertising data that's getting from there, purchase history, mm -hmm. uh, course location, phone number, email address, contact. Again, some of those things you, they already have just because you have other services. So uh, product interaction, crash data, uh, there's also performance data, uh, other diagnostic data, payment info, customer support, um, uh, product interaction, and other user content is just at least what I, I'm getting. Now, okay. again, some of this information we are not sure because there was just a, there was a series of tweets from uh, an exec from, I believe. Yeah, uh, so WhatsApp, the head right? of, head of uh, WhatsApp, Will uh, Koth, uh, Cathcart, um, I believe I'm saying it right. So uh, I'm just gonna read a few of his tweets just to give you some background. Now, as far as you know, we can tell, so he mentioned a few of the things that will be shared, but as far as we know, and you know, literally everywhere that we can see, your messages are still encrypted end to end, and mm -hmm. they will stay there, as will your calls and things. But I'm gonna just read out a few of the tweets here from um, Will at uh, the who's the head of WhatsApp. I've been watching a bunch of discussion this week about the privacy policy update. We're in the process of making what's at WhatsApp, and wanted to share some thoughts. Right, so he's. Initially saying, I want to share how committed everyone at WhatsApp is to providing private communication for 2 billion people around the world at our core. That's the ability to message or call loved ones freely protect, protected by end to end encryption. And that's not changing. OK, so that fundamentally, then they're not going to be able to see your messages with end to end encryption. We cannot see your private chats or calls and neither can Facebook. We're committed to this technology and committed to defending it globally. And then there's a link to the security uh, website. We've updated our policy to be transparent and to better describe optional people to business features, right? So I think this is where the key, this is what WhatsApp is saying. This includes commerce on WhatsApp and the, this, the ability for people to message a business right now I'm not going to read everything in here he carries on to say that a lot of whatsapp users um, 175 million people actually use whatsapp to communicate with businesses right so by enabling this you'll have that uh, ability the other thing that I can see as well and uh, another thing that I've read up online a lot as, about as well is whatsapp you know I, I believe they want to be more of you know they want to be more like WeChat. So right now, if you speak to anybody, I've got family and friends in China, and literally everybody. I mean, cash payments and things are very minimal in China because a lot of yeah. people just use WeChat to make payments, right? So it's it's actually a very common thing over there to use your chat app to make payments, right? So it seems like again one of the things that they are kind of getting through this is like if they can share that information, they're going to be able you're going to be able to make payments, etc. using WhatsApp, making it more um, like some, you know, global competitors, should we say? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely see that point. And I think it, it's honestly a valid way to have, uh, to make comments on, on WhatsApp, just because l let's be honest here, this is the other side of me, it's been free mm. forever, you got to pay yeah. for this, because we're uh, going to talk about some of the alternatives. Yeah. And even those guys, at some point, there has to be some payments. It. Yeah. So, so that's now one of the things we have to understand. But 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 here's the thing. So this this is so I think what it comes down to, right? What I think it comes down to is Facebook. <laughs> so people yes. do not yeah. trust Facebook. And you know, we've had this thing from Facebook for for many years now. You talk about something, you message somebody about something, you think about something, you dream about something. 
you wake up in the morning, you you open up Facebook, there will be an ad for that. <laughs> right? So this is <laughs> the thing. And, 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 Sam says and, and, you dream about something. And boom, Facebook has, you know, uh, got an ad for it. So this is the thing now. Again, you know, we're using these services for free. So, you know, in this podcast, we like to look at both sides. So, you know, we, we are, you know, not that we're Facebook fans or anything like that. Um, although I do have a Facebook page where I post some dope content. So do follow yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, Facebook by the stuff. way, I, I finally sold all my Facebook stock. Really? Yeah. yeah <laughs> is, is, that, yeah. is that because of everything that's happening recently? Oh, uh, no, no. I was trying to buy into Bitcoin. Sorry. That's different. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a topic for, for, for another time. But yeah, yeah. so essentially, uh, Facebook, I think it is that fear of Facebook. And recently, you know, there's been the whole situation with Apple. So Apple kind of allowing users to uh, restrict what they share with Facebook. That prevents Facebook from giving them targeted ads. Targeted ads was how Facebook really make their money. So Facebook are not happy about that. They've had, they've printed ads in, <laughs> in newspapers and stuff, which I think has actually backfired on them because because people are like taking Apple's side there. So I think more so than anything else, it's just like, as far as we can see right now, and from the tons of articles that I've read as well, uh, obviously if you're in the EU and um, uh, or, or, or the UK, or if you know, generally it's not gonna affect you much from what you've been using WhatsApp for previously. It is, I think, that association with Facebook that people don't like. Now, if you, are not you know if you are not comfortable continuing to use facebook then the good news is there are many many alternatives i did a poll on twitter um i'm gonna pull that uh, poll up on here and the two biggest um alternatives to facebook uh, sorry to whatsapp right now seem to be telegram and signal i had actually not heard of signal recently um, up until the time that um, Elon Musk actually um, tweeted about it. And then things just went off the roof, right? People were downloading Signal in record numbers. Um, so much so that uh, it was the top messaging app on most app stores, I believe, on, if not all. And also people were struggling to get the verification codes. So people were trying to like, okay, I want to download Signal. They download it, they get the verification, but the verification code was delayed because there was just yeah. too much demand. That's real influence there, Elon Musk there, just with one tweet. But just going back to this um, um, this uh, poll that I did, right? So we've had, um, on Twitter, we've had uh, 20,000 votes, 44% say Telegram, 43% say Signal, so it's pretty much neck and neck, and then 13% say something else. And there was a whole bunch of uh, different messaging apps that were suggested. Um, you know, we had the likes of Hangouts, but you know, some people actually said Facebook Messenger, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is your experience of, of using these other apps? E, firstly, I'm going to pass it over to you. Uh, um, I'll start off with Signal. I'll say the best, the best justification to get Signal is from Edward Snowden, and his tweet says, "Here's a reason I use it every day, and I'm not dead yet." <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you don't I know mean, who Edward Snowden is, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, that that in itself should be, um, you know, uh, 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 enough for you to <laughs> go with Signal. <laughs> I was going to say Signal is is uh, the encryption service, or what Signal has, is something that a lot of people like. Elon Musk, as you mentioned, is somebody who really likes Signal as as a messaging app. And in terms of what they actually get from you, there is no personal data stores your phone number and makes no attempt to link to your identity. And that's pretty much it. Telegram is what yeah. I have been using uh, f for quite a while. I've been trying to move more people over Telegram. I used to be a big Hangouts person, but Google kind of just let that die on its yeah. own. Um, mm -hmm. And Telegram gets contact infos, uh, contacts, and user ID. So those are the three. User ID meaning your telephone number is really, it's user ID. Okay. Uh, so. So, so there's a few things here. So um, I believe, um, so I heard Lou talk about this, um, that um, Signal is actually founded by one of the original co-founders of WhatsApp who stuck it to Zuck <laughs> and left after WhatsApp was taken over by Facebook and then created Signal, 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was the guy who I remember when he came out and he complained about Facebook. And I was also one of the people that said, "Bro, you made eighteen billion dollars," and so I mean, I don't know what you complain about. <laughs> Well, it's, it's you know, enough money but, to start up your own app <laughs> as a yeah, competitor, exactly. it, and it uh, get get you know some great recommendations uh, from the likes of Elon Musk. But so here's the thing for me, yeah, you know, privacy aside, one of the reasons that I I actually use other apps um, is because WhatsApp is so frustrating. One of the biggest things is you still cannot have it on multiple devices, right? And that annoys the hell out of me. It's just like come on, it's just something so simple. But the fact that it's restricted to one device, um, I really do not like that. Whereas Telegram in particular is across all devices and it's very, very easy to use. Great app overall, I'd, I'd say. Really, really, yeah. um, you know, re I mean, we're not getting paid by the way. Signal, <laughs> I have been, I, I've tested Signal out. Like another thing is all about contacts, right? So most of my contacts are on WhatsApp because you know, that's what I've been using for so long. Now, a lot of them are now transferring over onto Telegram. I've been getting so many notifications every day since this whole, uh, you know, WhatsApp privacy policy thing has come about. It's like pop up. This person has joined Telegram. This person has joined Telegram from your contacts, right? Signal, I installed it. I only have one person that I'm currently talking to on there. So it's very, very cool. limited. Personally, if I was to choose one between the two, I think uh, Telegram would be the option for me. I do have it alongside WhatsApp. You know, I'll put my hands up. I am still using WhatsApp. It's going to be very difficult to take my family and friends off there who have been using it, especially when it comes to parents. You know, parents love WhatsApp, don't they? Especially to yeah, send yes. you uh, uh. conspiracy theories <laughs> that get that get passed on from an auntie back somewhere who's heard something from somebody and just forwarded those messages on. That's something else that WhatsApp is very much known for it, no for it's funny because my mom actually sent me a message a video today i was like oh god no. but i played it and it was some some lady saying the whatsapp is changing your policies i was like this is the first legit video she sent me <laughs> <laughs> you know what i've said this before and maybe this is something we need to talk about in a very different podcast but um i i honestly think that zuckerberg has to step away as the ceo of facebook because if he doesn't the company makes some really great products. That's the bad. Mm -hmm. That's the sad part about it is that, like you mentioned, if this wasn't Facebook tied, I don't think anybody would really be this stressed about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah to be, people would be stressed about privacy concerns, but if it wasn't Facebook tied, or just put it properly, it wasn't Zuckerberg tied because that's really even where the you know the heart of the matter is. Then you know most people would have said like, oh okay, yeah, the, yeah, the company needs a new face. And I think we can talk about that some other time. Facebook needs a new face. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think there is, the, 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 there is a whole conversation to be had about the trust that Facebook has lost over many, many years um, yes. you know, yeah. of their users. Uh, will it stop people from, okay, so people are talking about WhatsApp here. Will it stop people from using Facebook, more so Instagram? Instagram, right? Instagram is in the veins of the younger generation, right? Is essentially. So will people stop using that? We we definitely have to because on my TikTok, I've been getting a lot of, and maybe it's just TikTok pushing that, but a lot of people are asking which social media network would die first. And most people are like Instagram because TikTok is doing yada, 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 yada. So, I mean, I think we should, we need to have an episode about TikTok versus Instagram and where the future okay, lies. Okay, so, so guys, uh, watch out for that. That's gonna be coming very, very soon. Moving on to our final topic for today's podcast, and that is Elon Musk now becoming the richest man in the world with around $190 billion, beating the king of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, um, by uh, a, a few billion. So yeah, a lot of that, of course, has to do with uh, Tesla and Tesla stock, which has gone crazy over the past mm -hmm. few months. I am not somebody who's a stocks and shares expert, but you know my my man Thunder here, who has uh, connections with um, Colonel Singala, who knows a lot about <laughs> moving money, shall we say? <laughs> wow, um, wow! Does uh, does have some experience? So uh, go on, uh, e e fill us in uh, about. Um, <laughs> You, the the bulk of uh, um, Elon Musk's uh, you know increase, shall we increase. say? I mean, I mean, it's it's been it's been tremendous. Uh, I would say, what beginning of last year, the richest people in the world were between uh, Bezos, um, Bill Gates, uh, the Oracle of Omaha, 
um, who I just forgot his name now, <laughs> um, Warren Buffett, yes, yeah. and, um, and um, Facebook CEO. Um, I forgot his name also again. That, like, wow, what's, Mark, what's wrong Mark, with my brain right now? Z- Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. So, so um, the, the, what's basically, let me just break down what's happening in E's mind right now. So when we started talking about money, he started seeing lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> and the names kind of faded away <laughs> to the sides. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Ba- what, ba- back to what, the point. What, what you notice is during the pandemic, things have changed. Amazon was Amazon had a very big spike because, of mm-hmm. course, it it fed and supplied almost everyone, um, mm. and that was what pushed Bezos quite high. Then um, you know Tesla stock has also done something quite crazy. They're one of the few car companies that were able to push. Uh, a, Products. They also just opened, uh, pushed their sales in China as well at very mm-hmm. competitive pricing. And I think um, you know Tesla stock had gone had incre- had increased tremendously last year. It went over a thousand dollars. They did a split on the stock, and then the stock price also now has gone up to about eight hundred dollars again. So mm. you do have a high amount where that value is tied to Elon Musk. So Elon Musk now is someone who. Um, his value is truly tied to Tesla and also SpaceX, which is which is great, which is fantastic. But it's okay. also something that I think, uh, you know, will be very interesting in the long run. So uh, a few questions for you. So firstly, do you think so? Do you think that the the, the stock is going to continue going uh, up, uh, or are we going to potentially see it slow down? Are we going to see it potentially go down? Uh, I think it will. I think it will go up. I think it will pass a thousand bucks in terms of uh, the value of the stock, and okay. I think you're going to see it, it hit that point. And then, of course, uh, it's going to split again. So I think mm-hmm. you're going to have that just because uh, the way Tesla is riding right now is really high, and Tesla is really. It's, it's for people who are in the stock market. Some people will tell you exactly why it's going up. I particularly don't understand because in terms of their production and where they are, Tesla is running on a really crazy hype that I think is similar to what how Bitcoin has been going up in mm. in in pricing. Now mm. the company is doing well, like the numbers are are somewhat there for the company, but I think it's a it's a mixture of Tesla and Elon Musk are doing well for each other. He's the okay. hype man, and that's the hype machine, and it's just kind of like going <laughs> back like- and forth. Feeding yeah. of each other. All right, another question. Is Elon Musk going to stay as the richest man for some time? Or do you think there's going to be, you know, Jeff is going to be fighting up again and, and coming up? What do you reckon? Like, same I think, I don't, months. I I I don't know how long he will stay there. I think, I think when we see Q1 early, earnings coming, and then when we start getting some of the bad news that Cybertruck's not coming this year, I, I, I can almost tell you that. It's just not going to come this year. Sorry, Saf. Man, I'm, not, it's, well, the thing is, it's going to be coming later to the UK anyway. So, um, so it's going to be coming yeah. later, later in the UK. Yeah, we're going to have to talk about Cybertruck in, in, in a future episode. One of the things I don't want, want to touch on, because, you know, uh, obviously there's mixed feelings about Elon Musk. I personally, you know, from, from a point of view of, you know, being a game changer, somebody who's, uh, you know, really a, a, an innovator when it comes to electric vehicles, to reusable rockets, you know, loads of these things. Um, is somebody that I think, you know, although I might, uh, I don't agree with all of his views, is somebody that I think, you know, is, is in our time, uh, somebody who is really, you know, making uh, a difference for, you know, the environment with uh, electric vehicles, space exploration. I want to kind of bring attention to one of his tweets uh, in reply to uh, the replies, the, the original tweeter actually removed it, but his, um, his reply uh, was, um, I'm just going to um, read this out. Uh, this was back in, um, so 12th of October, 2018. Elon Musk said, you should ask why I would want money. The reason is not what you think. Very little time for recre- recreation. Don't have vacation homes or yachts uh, or anything like that. About half my money is intended to help problems on Earth and half to help establish a self-sustaining city on Mars to ensure continuation of life of all species in case Earth gets hit by a meteor 
like the dinosaurs or world war three happens and we destroy ourselves did you did you see that e i i did i did i had a very different reaction from you okay so do you want to discuss your reaction or i'll discuss mine <laughs> uh, sure i'll go ahead with my, my reaction um I, I i mean i like the idea i mean on the surface value it seems really nice um, being an African and him being African also, I see many red flags in between all of that stuff. And um, <laughs> let's just put it this way. I, I'm not the biggest Elon Musk fan, as you know quite well. Mm -hmm. I think yep. he's a very smart individual and I like the stuff he does, but I also think mm. he's a bit of a megalomaniac. I'm not saying he is, he just comes up as that to me. Okay. So, yeah. um, so for me, I'm always cautious with that kind of stuff in general, which means... I take that with a grain of salt and hopefully it's I actually will swallow the salt and I'm fine with it. That's mm -hmm. how I put it. I'm like I'd rather take it with a grain of salt and go, okay, I was wrong. It's cool. I'm glad. So I'm glad so the thing wrong. that so so the thing that hit me is right, so okay, um this self sustaining um uh base on Mars, right? So yeah. cause 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 I always hear people um talk about this. It's like However, whatever it's going to take, uh, I believe I heard um, Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about this as well. Whatever it's going to take to solve the issues here on Earth, whether that be climate change, etc., surely that's going to be easier and cheaper to do than trying to set up a self-sustaining base on Mars, right? And I, I see that, but then I also see the other side of things. Now, the, the meteor hitting Earth, as far as we can see scientifically, it's not likely to happen anytime soon. And even if it was to happen, there would be very little we could do about it, like to actually deflect it. This is not the experiment. Oh, no, I mean, I mean we, we, <laughs> we can't. Do, we could do express stuff. Come on. <laughs> we, we, we can't do that <laughs> stuff yet. All right. Technology doesn't allow. It. But the, the interesting thing for me was, um, you know, the last line, which hit me hard. And I was like, you know, just I, I, I tweeted this out and I also um, put it on Instagram. World War Three happens or we destroy ourselves, right? Now, here's the thing. So, you know, peop the, the people who say whatever it takes is going to be easier to just fix the problems on Earth. How do we fix people, leaders <laughs> in countries who have access to nuclear weapons, right? That's something that's not easily fixable. And, you know, that's something that is potentially, and, and I, I don't want to go too deep here, right? But it's, you know, it's, it's a possibility. Things could go wrong very quickly. And we've seen what a pandemic has done to the global yeah, economy yeah. and everything over the space of a few months, right? So for me, that like hit hard. And I was like, hey, look, whatever it is, right? I would be totally in support for this, uh, this base on Mars, which, you know, would, um, you know, be like a, essentially a backup, but also would kind of extend our um, chances of, you know, survival in s if, if there was a situation to come a like situation. that, right? Uh, no, I, mean, I would I, also I, want to be on the flight to there because of everything that's happening here right now. <laughs> so sign me up. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say, as like, you know, would the colonel be allowed on that Martian base? Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna turn the Martian base <laughs> into his own Singala too. <laughs> kingdom, and he's gonna be like, where are the, he's gonna have all these Martian wives and all sorts. But yeah, that's that's something that <laughs> that that'll be that we we can make a we we can make a little sketch about that sometime or a, or a movie. Uh, but yeah, no, I I just thought it was quite interesting. But uh, I I think the the whole situation right now uh, with um, you know Elon Musk, it's something that Musk I'm quite interested in seeing. I mean, obviously, uh, I am a yeah. Tesla fan. I'll put my hands up. I own uh, a Tesla Model Three, uh, and I have a Cybertruck on order. I like the technology that's been bought. I like the innovation that's come here. But also, as I said, you know, somebody who's very much into space and um, you know just exploration. exploration um, I think yeah. that's that's a really interesting angle, and I'd love to see how that develops. Uh, you know, over the next sort of decade. Yeah, no, I, I do agree. I mean, like, just to put it out there, I do own Tesla stock. You know, just because me and somebody don't agree doesn't mean I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to try and make the money off it. I think yeah. for me, what what hit me with that line is because when he said that, it's very true. It's a very true line. But mm -hmm. I got the opposite response simply from the fact that he was the one who was fighting California to keep Tesla plants open when we're in the thick of yes. coronavirus. So for me, I'm like, that's double speak. But mm. maybe also in his mindset, there were certain things he wants. I, I, get, I understand and I get it, but yeah. it, it just comes off. That's why I say there's always totally. that kind of salt. Yeah, and, and, and as I said, um, you know, 
being a fan of a lot of things that he does i'm not somebody i don't think there's anybody in the world that you can 100 percent fully agree with and there will always be oh, but, differences but the of opinions <laughs> well he forces everybody to agree with him but <laughs> the kernel is is very different but yeah um uh yeah as i said you know just generally i think there is not going to be anybody that you fully agree with i think what the best thing is whether it be myself and e as well um you know take the good that you like and you know if there's something that you disagree with that's absolutely fine and i also like the fact that myself and e also you know being very good friends we also do disagree on a few things and that's something that i think you know is, is very important that you know despite disagreements you know we can work on common grounds and there is a lot more that we will have in common uh than differences so i think we'll absolutely. uh I, I think maybe we went a bit too deep there <laughs> But um, uh, I think we're going to end off on that. There were some really interesting topics. Um, and, you know, a lot of these topics were actually coming from you, the viewers, which, you know, we very much appreciate. So please do continue uh, giving us feedback. And, you know, if you are on uh, Apple Podcasts, then please do leave a rating. It will help the podcast just be recommended to more people. If you're watching this on YouTube, then, you know, do subscribe to the Super Sass Speaks channel and you know drop some comments get involved on social media we are super sass speaks across instagram twitter topics of discussion for the podcast are suggested on there and that's where some of the topics came for this episode as well so do jump in and get involved it's always nice to hear everybody's input really enjoyed chatting with e i hope you enjoyed the episode as well this is your host saf super saf and your co-host, Thunder E from Border Work. On Super Saf Speaks, and we'll see and hear you next time. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> I'm just going to say we'll see you next time. Even if, if, if that's... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll see you next time. 